Welcome back into American Football Media Day. Tulane Director of Athletics Troy Dannon has been a very significant influence in the world of college athletics, serving in many leadership positions. As chair of the Football Competition Committee, a member of the Football Oversight Committee, Constitution Committee, and the newly formed Transformation Committee, Dannon is charged with creating recommendations to create change as college sports as we know it adapts to unprecedented change. I now have the pleasure to welcome Troy into the American Studios. Troy, first off, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Your most recent leadership role, you were named to the NCAA Division I Transformation Committee. What is the overall motivation and purpose of this group? Well, I think it really began uh, after the Alston decision last summer in the Supreme Court, which which took some of the legal precedent for how the NCAA operated off the table and and, and uh, identified a lot of areas where we were in violation of antitrust law. And so uh, it led to the formation of the Constitution Committee, which all three divisions together uh, uh, basically restructured and reorganized the fundamental philosophies of the NCAA. You know, there wasn't a lot of consternation with it because most everything was, as I said, philosophical in nature. And and uh, I think the most significant part of the Constitution Committee was charging each division with with then reorganizing itself uh, to make sure one we were in compliance with with the antitrust laws as as was defined where we ought to compliance by the Supreme Court, but also to try to set a, a governance and organizational structure that would carry the NCAA forward for the next umpteen years. You know, this is the, really the first time in, in the last 30 to 35 years that such a task has been undertaken. So uh, really it has uh, a legal decision in its, in its background, but it's long overdue. In a year where college athletics has experienced major changes, you mentioned the Alston case ruling and uh, name, image, and likeness, the transfer portal. What is your evaluation of the current state of college athletics right now? Well, honestly, I think we spent maybe the better part of 30 years, you know, piling things into the corner. And, and ultimately, uh, I, I think, you know, personally, I don't know that we were responsive enough or proactive enough. And, and that's that's all of our collective faults. And all of a sudden, that pile of things got so high that all of a sudden it's come tumbling down. And so there are a lot of things that I think in, in uh, best practice, you would have seen things addressed over time. Uh, whereas maybe we didn't, and now we have a whole lot of things facing us at, at one time. You know, add, add in a couple of things. You know, one, I, I think the the uh, the last five years, and I've been at Tulane for six and a half, but and so maybe the last six and a half years, it's a different job as an athletic director today. You know, the mental health focus of student athletes, the the uh, the George Floyd decision, and and really, I think the subsequent empowerment of the student athlete voice isn't something that I know when I interviewed, there were no questions about what's the role of the student athlete voice today. Everything we're talking about, uh, both at the constitution and the transformation committee level was was about how do we elevate and empower the, the role and the voice of the student athlete. So it is a, is a totally different world in which we're living today, a world that's changing pretty quickly. And in a world where, you know, uh, you know, I think all things come down to money and and now we're at a place where we see coaches making $10 million a year. We see athletic departments, you know, uh, routinely over $100 million a year in, in total spend. And, and you know, as, as the money increased um, and, and maybe didn't find its way to to increasing the what we could do for the student athlete experience, I think all those things kind of came to a head uh, revealed in the Supreme Court decision. And, and now we're scrambling. Of all of the, the conversations and topics that have been addressed in the last year with the Transformation Committee, where have you all made the most progress? Well, depending upon who you ask, we've made no progress. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I think the important thing with the Transformation Committee was uh, you know, we maybe worked backwards and, and that was starting with the things that were were legal liabilities in our, in our rules. You know, we have a 400 page rule book and if you go back to the, the, the really the formation of the NCAA, it was it was brought on. It was created for three main reasons: one, uh, health and safety uh, for the student athletes; two, playing roles; and three, championships. 
But the rule book we have is not as big as it is because of those three areas. The rule book is 400 pages because we also try to regulate cost containment measures at the NCAA. We've, we, meaning the schools, have asked the NCAA to do that. We, we also regulate um, areas of, of maybe competitive equity that, that frankly cannot and should not be regulated. As much as you know, you want a homogeneity, we are not a homogeneous uh, group of institutions, but whether geographically or, or fundamentally in our, in our student composition, size, investment, uh, however you want to say it. So, so we've really spent, I think, the last uh, or the first six months of the Transformation Committee work uh, looking at how do we deregulate or re-regulate or, or uh, uh, really assess what we do uh, and make sure that the things we do are one core to the purpose of, of the organization, core to the need of the institutions, but also are, are, are legally grounded and, and founded and, and we don't need to be in court every day. And the NCAA has spent uh, much of the last few years in court. The next piece that, that you know, and I think everybody's waiting for is, you know, how do you govern in, in, in Division One this this group with budgets as small as $8 million and, and as high as $260 million, some that play football, some that, that don't play football, some that play a level of FCS football. How do you govern that group of people together uh, toward the same outcome? Uh, you know, as we head into the next phase of this, I think you'll see uh, the governance, you'll see uh, uh, the things that that may aggrieve people a little bit more because there'll be more dramatic changes uh, than, than we've seen in the past. One of the main topics this group is looking to regulate, name, image, and likeness. What is the single biggest concern regarding NIL right now? Well, uh, I, I think if you ask everyone, they'll tell you the, the recruit, the incentivizing the recruiting. Uh, uh, you know, I, I don't think anybody that I've talked to has any issue with name, image, likeness uh, opportunities for student athletes that are on our rosters, but but using those as faux deals to get kids to commit and, and to sign, you know, that was always the problem as, as NIL was discussed, you know, starting, you know, even pre-pandemic, uh, how do you control uh, pre-enrollment and, and control it from being an inducement? And I think as we've we've seen that it, it's it's almost impossible to control without congressional intervention and and I am not one who believes congressional intervention is is even an option at this point in time. So uh, you know we're we're going to have to we're going to have to adapt and adjust to that part. You know we have something that we're uh, in name image and likeness that we're really in the first full year of of understanding. I, I don't think the market has settled just yet. It's presenting challenges that we that none of us have ever had to deal with. But you also have to understand one thing about higher ed. You know that. As, as a general rule, uh, this, this is a, a massive enterprise and, and much like a ship, a massive enterprise is hard to turn. So uh, it, it's, it's going to take some time uh, to settle. And the other thing you have to understand is that, that uh, when you're at the top of the totem pole, uh, change is not necessarily your friend because change challenges your position at the top of the totem pole. And, and so a lot of people are figuring out that you have to change and evolve and adjust if you want to maintain your position uh, for, for a school like Tulane and even for the American Athletic Conference. So, you know, I think what the American Athletic Conference has done over the years uh, since Mike came in, you know, every time that challenges come, uh, we've responded very, very well to it and, and, and maybe stepped up ahead of other schools through that challenge and, and ahead of other conferences. This is just another challenge and, and you, you can either complain about it or you can figure out a way to adjust, adapt and use it to propel yourself forward. And, and I think that's already what, what this, I see the schools in our league doing and that's, that's what I see our, our conference as a whole doing. Troy, thank you so much for taking the time in your summer months to spend some time with us and educate us about all the great things that you're doing, the Transformation Committee is doing for college athletics. Really appreciate it. Morgan, I appreciate it. You know, good times are ahead. Great times are ahead for the American Athletic Conference. I think we're in a little bit of a sweet spot. And while a lot of the world is changing around us, I, I think we've uniquely positioned ourselves to take advantage of that. So uh, appreciate the time today and look forward to the year ahead.